lot of wealth managers don't understand that. Liquid assets today are mostly owned by the middle class broke people. Their salaries are barely keeping up with their debt, but it's also the middle class that is swinging for the fences. They're stretching themselves as far as they can because they have to take some risk if they want to retire comfortably. That's why they spend 40 years speculating. For this reason alone, liquid products are the one size that does fit all investment for the middle class. What people call investing today is really speculation. Think about Bitcoin investors. The people playing in that field are hoping nothing becomes something. It's a speculative investment for people who don't understand real investing. They're in and out of stocks. They're trying to build wealth. But since the pandemic, there have been political and societal changes that threaten that. You can't show off your 401k, but you can show off a building. If you can show it off, you can make people believe your ruse. You might only own one-tenth of that real estate asset, and there are a lot of other people building wealth on fractional investing. They build a perception. Wealth can be used to elevate a person's status and distinguish one person from the next. Maybe you appear smarter than your peers and contemporaries because you created your wealth in a way that they didn't imagine. Or maybe you look more sophisticated because your portfolio mix is a bit different. Your portfolio will stand out when it looks like a who's who of smart co-investors who share the same values as you do, not something any one of your peers are offered off of an institutional menu of liquid products they don't understand. Wealth distinguishes the classes, and the media is going to start driving an even bigger wedge into that gap. The critical conversations aren't as clandestine as they used to be. Those who have inherited significant wealth don't want the one-size-fits-all equity products that are being sold to them. They really don't trust their local middle American financial advisors with their inherited $250 million. The guy managing it is not credible to them. This causes contempt for his financial advisor. Some next-gens believe their financial advisor isn't as smart as he should be, doesn't appear to have similar drive or sense of urgency. He's got a fading tribal tattoo under his shirt sleeve. And all the next gen can remember is the blood, sweat, and tears his parents went through to get to this point in their lives. The financial advisor doesn't know anything about stocks and complex financial instruments. He really can't offer any insight besides what's on ESPN. So why trust him? It's a false narrative entirely.